Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm in Bahrain again for a, a little time. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> it's my wife taking the piss out of me as usual. So I've been in Bahrain for the last couple of weeks with family and friends and I wanted to vlog this camel which was a gift to me by my mates for a late Christmas present and I wanted to vlog it while I was there so I had my laptop and I did all the video stuff and the pictures, I managed to develop the film while I was out in Bahrain and when it got around to trying to put a vlog out I was using my laptop with iMovie on it which I've never used before. <laughs> And it just totally went tits up on me. I think I did about one minute of video timeline in about two hours. And that was when I realised, look, just enjoy your two weeks, take photos, get back, and then do your vlogging when you get back. And that's exactly what I did. That's what I'm doing today. And I'm going to show you guys this camera, the Fuji GW693 camera, which is an absolute beast. I mean, look at the size of it. <laughs> it is absolutely huge. And my mate sourced this all the way from Japan, from Bellamy, the Japan camera hunter. You know, the guy that runs the uh, JCH street pan film. He sources cameras from Japan, tries to find you the best ones. And that's where they got it from. And I've got the box you can see behind me there. And inside the box has got a few little certificates uh, and also the price, the original price of this camera as well. And I have used this before. My friend in Bahrain has actually got one, but the version two he's got. And I had used it before. <laughs> it's just ridiculously big. But I'll get me thinking to myself, I kept thinking, what was this used for back in the day? <sighs> Let us know in the comments. And it's quite a basic camera. It looks childlike almost. I can imagine Fisher Price slapping their sticker on there with a couple of fishes and selling it in a toy store. Someone sent me a couple of years ago. Look at this. You see? That's what I was on about. <laughs> I haven't used this yet. Actually, I did. I used this once in the garden for a test. I must uh, let us know in the comments if you reckon I should go out and do some street photography with this Fisher Price camera. It's got a flash and everything on it. But this camera is no way a toy. It's actually a serious piece of kit. So where our hotel was, was quite out of the way. There wasn't much around, um, but there is a lot of building work going on away from the hotel. And I thought it'd be nice to try and capture some of that before it all gets built up. So that was my idea. And that's where I took the camera for my uh, very first test. And I used a roll of Acros 100. I'll show you that there, uh, where I was, what I was taking photographs of and why I was taking those photographs. And I'll show you the results. And then I'll come back and talk about this camera. So I'm just walking out of my hotel. I've spotted something, there's not much around here. Uh, it's a new hotel and it's kind of in the desert, but every time we leave, I keep seeing this scene that I want to take a photograph of. So I've bought with me the GW693. And there's a roll of Acros 100 inside. And look, check this out. I've come out with my hotel slippers on. <laughs> I've not realized. Oh well, never mind. I reckon one day, all this will be hotels and buildings. Give it another, maybe 20 years. And right over the back there is the sea. And look, even around me, there's a, looks like a building over there. I don't know what that is in the background. Um, but you can see so much land is ready for development. I've got a strap on, as you can see. Not a literal strap on. I've got a strap on, as you can see. And it's not really hurting my neck or anything. And it's only a thin strap, so it's not that bad to take out and about. In fact, I don't see any problem with it at all. So that's my hotel right at the back there. And I'm literally on a brand new road. They built this brand new road that goes right off to wherever you want to go. So we're literally in the middle of nowhere. And things like this where you want to take photographs can really sort of strain your creativity, you know, because you're looking around. There's not much about to take pictures of, but if you really sit down and look and study, I reckon there is. I'm going to start off with this road sign. I haven't got a tripod, so I can't put the GoPro down for you guys to see what I'm doing. But I'm going to start off with this road sign. And although I've got this strawy light meter on top of the camera, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to go for the Sunny 16, but it's, it is quite bright. So I'm going to go uh, 100 speed film. I'm going to go 125th of a second, F22. I've got Fuji Acros 100 inside this camera. So uh, we'll wing it and see what we get. 
kind of coming down on these low zigzags. I don't think I can get that low. Just on my knees. Being a rangefinder, I'm focusing on that 100 sign and getting that back in focus. There it is there. F22, 125th of the second. This isn't the best picture in the world, but it's my picture. Shot done. Uh, I took a picture of this fence the other day with all this mesh on it and the wind was blowing beautifully. I'll show you that shot now. Hopefully that came out all right. Um, there's not much wind at the moment, so it's not doing what I wanted it to do. We'll see what else we can find. I've got seven shots left. We get a bit of sand up the bum. I hate these sort of shots, it really hurts my neck. I'm trying to... I bet the people around here thinking, what is this idiot doing? I like this little lens hood that comes with it. The lens had closed, it covers all the, all the uh, settings, the aperture and the shutter speeds, but with it open, it exposes all your information there, but also gives you a little bit of protection from any sun glare. And if you put the lens hood on, or the lens cap on, it pushes it back. So when you go to take a photograph, you know that you haven't got your lens hood on because you can't see none of the um, aperture or shutter speed selectors, you see. And with rangefinders, that's quite, common is to take a shot with the lens hood on because you can't see through the lens. So now I've got the camera back home. It's probably weighs, I don't know, just over a kilogram maybe. And it is built like a tank. It is very plastic around the outside. You can feel it, but it's quality plastic. It doesn't feel cheap. And underneath the weight is obviously through some sort of metal magnesium, I don't know, um, alloy construction underneath. But the main thing with this camera is it's fixed lens, the 90 mil Fujinon lens. And it's got, it says on there EBC coating, which I believe stands for electrode beam coating, whatever the hell that means, some Japanese uh, spangle dangle thing they did with these lenses. But it's quite contrasty and it is bloody sharp as well. The apertures go from f3.5 all the way to f32 and the shutter speeds go from a time mode, it doesn't say bulb, it says timed, uh, one second all the way to one five hundredth of a second. And it's a totally manual camera, there's no light meter inside, all it's got is a range finder, so you have to do your own metering and you have to use the range finder, which is really easy because this range finder is absolutely massive and it's the, the focusing ring on this lens is so smooth, it's, it just feels really good in the hands. I wonder what they used this camera for back in the day. This one, this one was, I think, was the last of the era of these GW or these 6x9 Fuji's around the early 90s, 92, I think, this one was introduced, um, and that was it. They, they'd done with it. But they started off in the 60s when they started making these uh, cameras, and I actually called them the, the uh, Texas Leica. It was from Fujica at the time. So I believe, because it was so big, in Texas, everything's big out there. I don't know, I've never been. And the K at the end, they call it the Texas Leica, being a, a, a range finder. And like all companies still today, Nikon and Canon and Sony, they always end up bringing out cameras and then upgrading, upgrading to different models. And that's what they did with this camera from the 60s all the way through to the 90s. And underneath, I don't know if I can show you there, underneath is a little tiny counter. You can see the counter there. Um, and that tells you how many shots you've done, which I've never seen on a camera before. And this one says one, 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 and I think you times it by 10. So what's that, 1,110 shots this camera's taken. I wonder if there's a way of clocking it back like you used to do the cars, you know, clock it back to just maybe 10 shots. Uh, but I've never seen that before, quite interesting. And on the top, you've got a little switch there, 
where you can change it to 220 film, which will give you 16 exposures, eight exposures for 120 film, especially with today's prices. And also this one's confused me. It says four exposures, 120. And I'm thinking, how does that work? Maybe there was half a roll that they sold back in the day. I really don't know. Four exposures, 120. Someone let me know in the comments what that means. Um, but other than that, you're only going to get eight shots because this is a six by nine camera. So you're only going to get eight shots out of a roll of 120. And it does think, you do think to yourself, blimey, I've just spent, you know, 10 quid on a roll of film and I've only got eight shots. So maybe this camera will just come out on certain occasions or certain projects that I might be doing. And up until now, I've been shooting my folding cameras for six by nine uh, photographs. So, you know, I wouldn't say it's a waste of film. It depends what you want and depends what you're shooting with. I'm trying to build a collection of six by nine legs that I can put in scrapbooks, make contact prints in my dark room and put in scrapbook books. Uh, and people say to me, you've only got uh, your own, your enlarger in your dark room only goes up to uh, six, six. But I've got an Intrepid enlarger that I can set up for larger prints, which I do for my 4x5 stuff. It's a bit of a faff, but it only takes about 20 minutes. And once that's done, I can take all my negatives in there and then print to my heart's content, you know. So there's no problem with printing these negs. But I'll tell you what, the 6x9 format, as I said in previous videos, you don't get some uh, amazing quality out of them. They're so big. And even when you're scanning them, there's so much detail going on. I took this camera to uh, a farmer's market while I was out in Bahrain. And this farmer's market's all fruit and vegetables and crafts going on. It's quite a nice place to go, quite quirky. So I ended up shooting three rolls. I took two uh, Delta 100 films, which I think I pushed to 200. And I also took a Ortho 80 film as well. So I ended up shooting three rolls at this farmer's market and only getting, what, 24 photographs back. I'll show you those images now that I got. And it was quite a bright day. So I was just going around trying to find people hustling and bustling, um, you know. But more, moreover, I had absolute pleasure in shooting this camera. I did get some strange looks because, I mean, look, the thing, it just absolutely covers your face. And I think to myself, what was this camera used for? I can imagine events, I can imagine um, maybe reporting press photography or something like that. As for street photography, I'm not sure this is a street photographer's camera. It's hardly inconspicuous. You know, you're gonna stick out like a spit roast at a vegan convention if you're gonna be using this <laughs> out on the streets. And I'm sorry for saying that word in front of any vegans. But you know what I mean, this sort of camera, it's not inconspicuous. If you're on the street trying to shoot this, people will be like, what the, <laughs> you know? Let me know in the comments, have you got one? Do you use it for, what do you use it for? I did put a um, post out on the community area on my channel and I got some interesting feedback about this camera. So if you're interested to see what others have said, I'll put a link in the description, hit the link and you'll go through and read what people have said about this camera. And these are the legs, you can see that I can only fit Two, two legs in each section of the sleeve. So that's one roll of 120. So I've got eight shots there. Another roll, eight shots. Another roll, eight shots. And talking about uh, coming back from Bahrain, uh, going, putting films through the x-ray. Last time I went there, I, I pulled my films out and had conversation with the security and said, look, this is film. I don't want it to go through the x-ray. Is there any way that you can check this for whatever and uh, it not go through the x-ray? And they hand checked it and I got out there and I did the same when I came back. So I had no problems. But this time I just dumped it all in the luggage case and thought, I'll see what happens. Most of the film I took was 100 and 400 speed. Um, so I didn't think there'd be too much craziness going on. But I did notice uh, when I developed a couple of rolls of film out in Bahrain, the base was a little bit foggy, a little bit darker than I, I was expecting. I thought, mm, okay, that's strange. And when I came home and started developing, I also noticed uh, the films that I took through the x-ray was also a little bit heavy on the base. Not too much that I can't get prints from or scans. They're perfect for that, but uh, just not as clear as I'm used to or I expected. So I presume somewhere along the line, through the x-rays, it's done something on the film, but I didn't get any wavy lines or nothing weird going on. I just noticed that the base of the film was a little bit, not foggy, but just a little bit more dense than it otherwise would be on a normal roll of film. But putting it through the x-ray, I think something happened 
let us know in the comments if any of you have had any problems with x-rays and films and I know that Lena uh, has put a video out on testing x-rays as well so if you want to look, go to Lena's channel I'll put a link in the description she's done a thorough test on uh, films going through x-rays at airports and when you load the camera you've got this little tiny clip on the side here for loading you just pull that down you can't it won't fire the camera won't fire unless you've got the back open or a film inside so just by opening the back it will now fire and if I can try and show you this strange sound when it fires why don't it fire oh, I've got the lock on <laughs> There we go. Can you hear that sort of ping? That's a pinging sound. I'll put it close to the mic. So it makes this kind of spring recoil sound going on inside, but I think that's got to be something to do with the counter maybe. Um, I don't know, but it's a leaf shutter. There's no curtain inside at all. It's just a leaf shutter. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> Uh, and also these little tiny red buttons on the on the ends that's what you press to release your film spools or load film or whatever um, and it's you know that's about it. it is a real basic camera and I'm looking forward to using this more over time for my 6x9 collection that I want to do and like I said with the cost of film now you know eight shots out of a roll of 120 if I'm going to be shooting Kodak Triax has come down in it from they reckon 30% I've actually looking the other day uh, it was about 15 quid a roll it's now come down to about 10 quid a roll so that's quite exciting news uh, but if you want to go and shoot few jackross or something it's about 15 quid a roll you're only going to get eight shots out of it but um, I want to use this for certain projects that I want to keep in my scrapbook of, of six by nine um, contact prints that I've made in my darkroom so maybe portraits or a little bit of street if I don't stick out like a spit roast uh, at a vegan convention and uh, you know, maybe uh, documenting anything else that I find interesting that I want to shoot six by nine and get bags of detail. And let's not forget landscapes and seascape as well. I can use it for that. Get nice big negatives. I think I can also find some sort of converter that I can put in there for 35 millimeter film and have these nice big panoramic uh, negatives as well. Not sure how I'd be able to print them but uh, it'd certainly be interesting to play around with. But other than that, it's a fixed lens. You can't change the lenses. It's pretty much a six by nine point and shoot, but it feels quality. And that lens is absolutely beautiful. I'll show you a few more pictures that I took guys and I'll wrap it up um, because I've got to uh, <laughs> unpack my suitcase and get some washing. I've got to need to wash my pants. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you with some more uh, photographs. I will be making a vlog of my trip in Bahrain and some of the other photographs that I took with other cameras and film. Other than that, I'll catch you next time.